Okay, guys, let's dive into Shopify. I'm gonna show you the basics of the Shopify menus and how to navigate in and out of the different sections inside Shopify. And then in other videos, we'll go dive deeper into how we use these sections or uh, how to get more out of them. But just this is what the homepage will look like. And over here on the right, you can see you have some data about your sales and you can say, you know, filter by this week, this month, things like that. You get to your top products. So it gives you a quick snapshot of what's going on with your store. Now here in the middle, it gives you a little bit of extra information that for the most part, you don't really use this middle part um, a lot because I like to go into deeper into like, let's say the analytics, so I can get all the complete information, but it does give you some information on here uh, about the different sections of the website or different opportunities that you maybe you're missing out on and, and stuff like that. So you should still look this over. You might be able to find an opportunity here and there of maybe somebody uh, like like this here, people from these cities are most likely to become customers, okay? So maybe you can create campaigns that target these specific cities since you know this is where people are mostly coming from uh, according to your sales, right? All right, so over here on the left, you have your menu items, okay? Starting with home, brings you right here to the dashboard. Next is you can go to your orders, okay? So this will bring up all the different orders from the day. It'll say if it's been unfulfilled or fulfilled yet, which is, you know, um, the pro depending on how you have that set up, maybe if you have it tied to your Amazon, uh, takes a little bit longer. If you don't and you have some other system for fulfilling and shipping your orders, that might be a lot faster for this to show up as fulfilled, you know, things like that. But it will tell you if somebody has paid or if a payment, you know, maybe was um, uh, failed, you know, things like that. It will also detect when something is just out of the normal. So for example, if you can see here, this order was $72 compared to the normal um, sales of you know 20 to $30, something like that. So you could take a look at it and just make sure that there's nothing funky going on and, and it is a, a real order. If you want to, if um, you wanna maybe call the person, you know, things like that to kind of verify that. But Gives you all the information also what happened with this specific order. So it says uh, this order was created as a draft order. So somebody from the brand or the website or the store, right, created this order and said, okay, customer, you can go ahead and, and check out now. And now, um, you know, they made a payment and then the order confirmation email was sent and all that, okay? This I like is is pretty helpful as well. This will tell you each order if you want to study them one by one and it'll tell you, okay, this was the first order they made. This was uh, after just one session that came from Google over one day. Sometimes it'll, this will say first session from Google and it'll say maybe five sessions over three days, 10 days, something like that. So you can kind of start to get an idea of that customer journey and what it really takes for for your customers to convert or how your marketing is doing on converting these customers if you're targeting a lot of top of the funnel and cold audiences then um depending on your store and what you're selling i mean sometimes you most of your orders will look like this because it's very direct sales or if you're the type of brand that's doing a lot of nurturing and retargeting and building up your your audience and getting them uh increasing your repeat order you know, percentage, then you will see that, um, you know, this is not, maybe this will say, this is their third order. They'll still say where the first session come from and it'll say how many times they've come back to the store. So that's some helpful information, maybe to um, adjust your marketing strategy or anything like that. What's cool is I, I like that it also gives you here all the abandoned checkouts. So if you are the type of person or your customer that you maybe you're doing media buying for is the type of person that will call these people that abandon the cart, that is a strategy that works really, really well because sometimes people just need to hear from a real person and kind of ask some questions, maybe FAQs that are not on your website, things like that, that didn't lead them to make a decision. So they need, they need that personal touch. So you can come in here, you can click on it, and now you can just come in here and get the phone number, call them right away. You can also send them an email. Or of course, if we have automated emails, then those should be going out to the abandoned cart people as well. You should also have abandoned SMS going out. So text messages, right? 
But in addition to that, you can add that human touch and recover a lot of these sales, a lot of these abandoned checkouts. All right. The next menu item is just for your products. If you're going to add a new product or you need to edit a product, you can come in here and find it here. So let's say that we were looking for Ash, uh, Ashwagandha. So, okay, let's say that we're looking for this one here. If we click on it, it will bring up a product page that looks like this. Sorry, this is not the actual page. This is the the settings of the page, right? So now you can get in here and you can add a little bit of copy. Maybe you want to update the copy. Maybe you want to add a image here before all of this copy goes into play. You go insert image. If it's one of the ones you already have in here, you can just you know choose one of those. You can upload a file and add a new image. Okay. You can also just do by URL. Maybe the image is somewhere else and it'll take it from there and put it in here. But just to give you an example, let's say I wanted to add this one here. I would insert the image, and now it's showing up there before all of my copy. Up here, you can – let me go ahead and delete that before I forget. Okay. Up here, you have um, – you can make a duplicate of this product and just change a little something. Maybe you have a four-ounce bottle instead of a two, you know, that sort of thing, and you can just keep everything that's already here. <clears throat> if you click on View – Okay, it brings up your product page. So now you, if you made changes, you can like review them and see, you know, what you like about this new view and, and things like that. If you were to add that image, it would be right here before all of this text, which I actually don't think might be a bad idea. Okay, um, adding some tags here that include, of course, what your product is about, but also thinking about relevant keywords that your product is about will help SEO. It will help when people are searching your website. Um, it just helps in, in various ways. So you want to add relevant keywords and definitely, you know, things related to your product here. Okay. Uh, you can add in all your images. You can as also add in, like I said, from a URL. You can also add, I believe, videos here. Yeah, you can also add some videos. So I highly recommend videos for your product pages. That definitely should be part of it. These images here, which we kind of like coin, you know, like lifestyle images, kind of showing the product in use or, you know, something of how you can use it in, in, in your life and things like that. These are also really good or just, you know, something that highlights the benefits like we've done here. Okay. Um, this is another cool idea, just adding something that people care about, like it's made in the USA or including your guarantee in the images. Okay, and then here's your pricing. If you add in compare at pricing, it will show the um, strike through uh, price on your product page. So that, um, depending on if you want to go down that, that route or that strategy, that's where you would add that in here. Uh, I'm not getting into like again every single little detail, but just a, like an overview of what you can do here on um on the different parts of the menu. So this is your product page, pretty straightforward. If you want to go in and edit it, edit the website SEO would edit all of this here. So in case you want to maybe shorten this URL, for example, that would be a good idea to add in specifically the keywords maybe of the benefits or the problems that people are looking for that your product would solve, that would be um, a good idea to edit your page title, which is this up here. Uh, if you want to edit the URL, like I was just talking about up there, I believe it's actually down here, a URL handle, okay? All right, so let's continue. Inventory, from our agency point of view, we usually don't go in and manage the inventory for the customer, but if you needed to access that information, that's where this would be here. Usually our customers are managing the inventory. They come in here, they monitor this. If it's you know, going low, you can let our customer know so that they can um, go ahead and update that, of course. Transfers, 
again, we don't really deal with this uh, section as well. Being an agency, we're mostly focused on the media buying and the conversions and the you know buying uh, traffic coming in and converting all of that. So, okay, collections. You can in this section here make a collection of products that are all you know closely related. And let's say you have uh, books that you sell. So you can make a collection of just books. Or if you want to segment this by, let's say, uh, different products that your, your brand would handle. So let's say you make a collection of stress relieving type of products, or maybe one that's for energy supplements, you know, things like that. So that's where you would come in here and you can make different collections. And like it says here, product tag is the way that you would add products to this specific collection. So you can create a collection here. And then once you create it, it'll look like this. You can add an image. And then, uh, so these are products of the best. So this collection here is the women's health collection that is product tag is equal to women's health. So this needs to be in your product page like I showed you on the other menu um, under the tag section so that you can add it to this collection. Gift cards, we as an agency usually don't um, use this a lot. Usually the customer, if they're going to um, make a gift card as one of the products that they can add to the store, then you can do that here. Okay, here's all your customers that have bought from you in the past. And you can sort these guys by, let's say, oh, I, I just want to see the ones that, um, you know, maybe made the most orders. So you can see here, start sorting it by that. So let's say customers who, who have purchased more than once. Maybe you want to take these customers and export them and add that list to your shop, your Facebook ads, or maybe your Google ads or anywhere else that you maybe you want to retarget these people. These people have purchased more than once from you, so they're a lot, you know, more more likely to purchase again from you. They're your warmest audience, so the, you do want to go after that. Uh, these people here, finances as a agency, we also don't get too much into this, but this is where you would find anything that has to do with, let's say, the payments or how much the store is going to get paid out or how much they're paying in fees, things like that. That's usually not part of our agency um, you know, system to get that detailed into it. Like I said, it mostly focuses on, on traffic and, and conversions and things like that, but that's where this menu item would be, the payouts. Okay. <clears throat> and sometimes you don't even have access to those type of finance um, uh, menus, by the way. Okay. So this section is actually the one that gets used about 90% of the time when we log into the store because we need to be looking at the information to make decisions such as, let's just say we go for um, month to date. I want to see what kind of sales we have this month. Okay, and it automatically compares it to the same time last month, by the way. So now you can see how many sales we got. We see that we're 7% down for the month. Okay, we got to kick it up, kick it up, kick it into another gear, right? And and get these sales um, up. We see that our store sessions are down, but our returning customer rate, which we've been working on nurturing and getting these people to buy over and over, has been going up at 61% up for this month. Um, that was also due to holiday sale going out and targeting our past customers. So that's why this reflects a lot there. You can see here right around this time and this time we did those those broadcasts. Okay, but we can see that if we're getting less store sessions, but we're converting more, so something is you know, working with the conversion, but maybe we just need more traffic because the conversion is, is happening. So that's how you would use this information here. Again, I'll make another video to dive in deeper to the analytics, but it gives you all this like overview information if you're heading in the right track or not. Are we getting more sales? Are we getting a higher average order value? So each order that comes through needs to be um, more and more. If we, if we work on that, we will work on, or, or that will obviously affect our total sales, which we're highly focused on for ROI. It just gives you a bunch of other information on here, which again, we can get into in another video. The uh, report is very similar there to the analytics, but um, we, we 
use the analytics more to build our own custom reports with within our agency but if you wanted to see certain uh, reports yourself you can you know log into this section here so let's say um, sure let's look at um, sales sales over time sales by product sales by uh, let's say sales by discount so you can see which one if you have let's say affiliates that you give a discount code to each one of them now you can see which one's bringing in more sales based on the on that discount so let's just see if I have anything in here so 15% and 10% so oh I'm sorry this is 15 orders yeah this is um, save 10 it's 10% off so that's the one that's uh, giving me 15 orders what date is this this is in the last 30 days pretty much whereas 15 you know 15 Easter this is the uh, Easter sale that I was just talking about a lot of people didn't actually use the, the discount but we got a lot of extra traffic like I was saying so there you go that's where you can see these sales by discount and see what's working what's not working this live view is pretty cool because it kind of shows you where all your sales are coming from in real time or where your your people are logging in from see right now we only have one person so it doesn't show a lot of data but if you have a bigger store and you're getting a lot of traffic all day long this is actually pretty cool uh, view sometimes to leave up so you can see you know where your sales are coming from like i said Okay, now under this marketing section, so this depends how much you're gonna use this section depending on your strategies and what how you're driving traffic or can, doing your marketing, things like that. For the most part in our agency, the marketing a lot comes from, traffic is coming from Facebook, Google, you know, that sort of thing. And then when they come in, we're remarketing to them via an email service such as Clavio or SMS or retargeting ads right but under this marketing campaign or marketing section you can set up your emails to go out so let's say let's see if I have one here so you can see here we have uh, an email that we we're gonna send out here for the Easter celebration so you can come in here and set up your email and kind of design it even in here and stuff like that it is pretty limited that's why we also use a different provider such as Clavio because it doesn't let you fully customize everything but the really cool thing about this using the emails from within the Shopify store is they get very very high delivery rates so sometimes customers will open up those more than from somewhere else because the other ones maybe are not getting through to the inbox so that's something to consider. You might want to try both. You might only want to stick to one or this one, et cetera. You do get a certain amount of emails for free every month. And I believe they upgraded this to 10,000 emails a month, or it could be a thousand. Let me see. Okay, they did up update this to 10,000 emails. So you have plenty to work with there. And you can, um, you know set some stuff up through here you can also set up your automation such as if somebody is abandoning the cart abandoning checkout emails by Shopify so this is something that again um, pretty limited you can't like um, it, it is pretty limited compared to like Clavia which we can get into that in another email or in another video but you can uh, I still highly recommend that you use this and like I said even the other one because um, if somebody abandoned the cart they obviously have a high intention, high interest in this, and we got to do everything we can to try to bring them back and convert before they go cold again, right? All right, this is the discount section. You, there's two types of codes that you can do a discount code where somebody has to input that in to the checkout process, or you can also just do an automatic discount, such as, let's say, call this just a test, uh, 10% off applies to let's say all products maybe just a couple of different products let's say you're you're running um, I don't know Facebook live or an email blast or anything and you say you know this product is on sale to the end of the month well you can come in here and say which product it is let's just say it's this one gets 10% off uh, I believe you just leave that in zero okay good let's say this is only good for you know one day or whatever that the, whatever the case is and now this will be 10% off automatically when they go in a checkout with this item in the cart 
and it's only going to apply to this one item though if you say applies to all products then it's like oh 10 percent off site-wide you know um whatever you whatever you choose it could be dates or minimum purchase amount and that kind of stuff and then what's also cool is you can say buy x and get y so this is like uh you can do a combo you know promotion here so that you can entice people to buy you know more than one product if that makes sense okay um let me go back to the other one okay so the discount codes discount codes is something that we use a lot here in our agency and you let's just create a, a new one here so i want to do a, a discount code that they have to enter the code at checkout okay so let's call this maybe you know may um 10 or you know maybe mother 10 something like that mother's day is coming up so we give a, a percentage off of 10 this is only a one-time purchase so it only if they enter an email xyz at gmail.com that's how they track if this per if this discount code would be available to them uh, just this one time um and, and if they come back and they try to use it again with that same email then it wouldn't apply if they use another email they can still get another order with another 10 percent off that one order but in the end i think it's a good exchange to increase your your sales so again this applies to what all products just a, a specific collection that you created maybe it's called the mother's collection i don't know or just one specific couple of specific products and things like that Okay, and this applies to everyone. Usually when you're running a sale like this, like a Mother's Day sale or something like that, then it, it's gonna apply to everybody. So this is like, let's say you say, um, it only applies to the first 100 customers, hurry up, go in and buy now. And if the code is working, then you're part of the 100, you know, something like that. It creates a lot of scarcity and and, and FOMO and, and you know, fear missing out and people want to really jump on, on on your sale when you do something like that so that's a good tactic right there now check this out you can also actually let me get out of here because i don't want to create that but let's say that this code right here this code right here is the one i want to promote on an ad let's say it's a retargeting ad probably not sorry but um let's say you, you make a better a better code word than that right and you want to use this on your retargeting ads then you can do that and you get a shareable link and it says you can share this discount link with your customers and this the discount will be applied at checkout when customers use this link so they they click on your link they land on your page they go and they check out it will automatically be applied at checkout if they click on your link they add it to cart and they leave and then now your email or your something sms let's say tries to get them back into the store when they come back it's not going to be automatically added there to the cart because they're not using this link to come back and shop if that makes sense all right so okay now on the apps obviously there's tons and tons and tons of different options when it comes to apps and we can, we're going to make a whole another video with regards to what apps we should have standardly at least for our agency here if you're watching this video on youtube then you can uh, customize that to what fits your needs of course but this is where you would have your apps and um let's say that you want to add a new app just click the button and now it should take us to the apps store so it takes you to the store here and now you can just search for the app that you want or you can type in certain keywords and it'll just suggest different app to help me with seo and now you can jump in here and kind of study each one it's cool because they show you the number of reviews that it, it has gotten and maybe you know you can use that as a as a buying uh, mechanism there or decision making so but i don't have anything here to, to recommend in particular for seo but you know you just do your research and choose one of these and then once you do let's just say that we're going to go with um say this one okay i'm going to add an app and then you would just say install app so you see how it redirected me back to the page you would install this app now you do need the um store 
I'm sorry, the, the store owner access for the store in order to do this. So if you're, you know, working f for, you know, the person that owns the store, then you got to get them to do this, or you got to get them to transfer you as owner access, which usually is not going to happen. So just get them to, you know, add these different apps to the store that you want. All right, now, almost here to the end. Okay, so if you're over here, let's see. On the um, last part of it here, it has all to do with, um, um, you know, cha changing or editing your store. So the first thing is the theme here. Again, from our agency point of view, we don't mess with the theme unless they have hired us to do a whole, you know, a reconstruction of the store or a maybe a construction of the store if it's from the ground up. But we don't usually customize this for for the theme, so I'm actually going to skip this section. But at least now you know this is where you're going to go in and you can make changes to the theme itself. Let's say that you want to edit code and maybe you want to edit. Let's see, where would it be? I think it's theme liquid. Here we go. So this is the whole theme liquid. Liquid is the code that Shopify uses. This is the whole, you know, uh, theme site-wide code. So if you need to add some sort of a um, tracking code or something like that, where it directs you to the head of the section uh, of the store, this is where you would come in and you would add your code right here, and then you would just click save. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. Okay, over here has to do with your store, um, you know, pages and menus and additional stuff that doesn't have to do with selling uh, the products. So you can add blog posts here, pretty self-explanatory. You would just add a blog post and go through, you know, build, building that up. Okay, pages, this would be like if you need an About Us page, you need... Um, shipping information page, an FAQ page, anything like that, you can come in here and you can add it. Pages, you can uh, you, you can link that to your menu on your store. So, or, or at the footer sometimes. So like the shipping policy, let's say you want to put that at the bottom because it is required to have that, that, that type of stuff in there. So that's where you would come in here and you would create your pages for that. The navigation, is for your menus. So like I said here, if you want to add in, let's say menu, um, let's say shipping. Okay, so now the shipping is now added here to the menu. Let me save it and show you what that looks like, but I'll come back and delete it. Okay. Let's see. We'll be here on the main menu. So if we click on it, it should take us to that page. Exactly. So it takes us to the shipping policy page itself. So now, again, if you want, like we have our story here, we have maybe best sellers, and that's a category in itself. Uh, uh, sorry, a collection, as you can see here, collection of the best sellers. So yeah. That's how you add something to the menu there. Okay, and the same thing with the footer menu. If you wanted to update the, the footer, the bottom menu, you can do that here. Okay, now the last thing, second to the last thing, is the preferences. So under preferences, you can edit your homepage title, which is, let me show you. If you see up here at the top, Whatever appears in there is the title of this page. So for now, it just says Arumama because there's nothing on here, right? But if you wanted to update that, you can do that here. You can also update your image in case somebody shares this on social media. We chose to put a little bit of these trust badges plus the logo on here, but you can update this to just your logo or anything you want really. But that's the image that people are gonna see when they post a link to their Facebook or something like that. And of course, they're going to also get a link back to your store. The main reason that we come into this section here is because of the Google Analytics. We need to install the 
Google Analytics code so that it can be installed and injected into all the different pages so we can track everything accordingly. For the Facebook pixel, if you chose to go down this route only of using Shopify to install your Facebook pixel and you know to to have them to, to use the system of Shopify to install your pixel and tracking and all that, fine, that's where you would put it. But I don't recommend it. I had issues with it in the integration. Sometimes it's broken and things like that. And the easiest way to manage the Facebook pixel and the most ninja way to do it as well is to use an app that is called Trackify. So Trackify app, it does cost, I believe it's $29 a month, but it's well worth it. You get an ROI from it because just the customer service alone is worth it. So if you run into any issues where you're maybe this is not tracking, that's not tracking, or the pixel's not set up on this page or that page, their support team is, is really, really good and they will help you out. And if not, if it's something like very complicated, at least they have somebody there that can come in and help you. For $100, usually they take, a, take care of the whole problem for you. But um, it's pretty straightforward if you follow all the instructions. They have a ton of training and things like that. So Trackify and even creates the catalog for you that you need for your dynamic catalog ads for Facebook. So that's the one I recommend. You can also do backup pixels. So in case your first one gets disabled or you lose access to that business manager, whatever happens, you at least have a backup with your other pixels. So um, I'm going to skip that section here and skip you know the rest of these sections here. Okay, so the last thing is on the settings. So the settings part of, of this here, again, it depends if your customer is giving you access to, what they're giving you access to. In this particular case, I, we have full admin access. So, you know, we have access to users and permissions. This is where you would come in and you can add a staff member or, um, you know, remove them as well. If you need to update the payment options, again, you need to have the owner, you see how it says only the owner access can come in here and make these type of changes. So you would need to have them come in here and do that for us. Okay, you can customize the checkout system or the checkout pages, not, the, not, not really the system, but the page itself. And You can, let's see if it loads here. Okay, so for example here, I highly recommend that you update this image. This image, is, ha, I would include some trust badges like we have here, something that gives a customer trust that their money is gonna be nice and safe, right? And then of course you, you can do a, branded, uh, a branding by adding the logo. That's where you would add that, that image right there. Okay. Um, the rest of the stuff pretty straightforward. You can just kind of go through it and see what needs to be updated or not. Okay, uh, let me see if we need anything else on this section. Okay, this is something that every store should have to, before, before you start running a lot of traffic to your store, you need to make sure you have your refund policies in place, privacy policy is something that you'll get flagged for if you don't have this on your store. So all of this stuff needs to be in there. It needs to be edited and updated. And um, yeah, you can easily search Google for some templates on that and then just update it yourself for your own store. The domains if you're going to get a custom domain this is where you would buy it and if you buy it through here it makes it very nice and seamless and pretty easy to just connect it to your Shopify store from here if you already have it then you can just connect it um, co connect an existing domain here it is okay and you would have to go through the instructions depending on what website what registrar you bought it from they would give you different instructions on how to do that because you have to go to wherever you bought the domain, update some information in there, in there to point the domain to your store over here so that it knows. Shipping and delivery, this is a important section here. You gotta update this information depending on how the customer's doing business. If like, like here, you know, local pickup or not, or um, you know, that sort of stuff. But in general, you're gonna go in here to this section and you're gonna do a, a, a domestic you know, zone and like they did here, rest of the world zone. A lot of our customers in our agency, they only do 
domestic, so usually would only do one uh, zone here, but you know this is where you can um, this is where you can edit it here if you're going to do let's say 4.99 shipping or free shipping for everybody, you know that kind of stuff. All right, guys. So I think that is a good overview of the menu. If uh, there's anything that you want more detail in any of these um, menu items, please let me know so we can make a full detailed video of that. But this gives you a good overview so you can navigate Shopify and you can feel comfortable whenever we need to make a change or whenever uh, in our agency, for example, we have different systems that we need to set up whenever somebody gets onboarded then we need to go through these different you know, menu items to set up that system. And if you're watching this on YouTube and um, you have any specific questions about your Shopify store, let me know. Or you know, if you're interested in having my agency run your uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, anything like that for your e-commerce Shopify store, reach out to us. Uh, there should be a uh, link in the description where you can reach out to us so you can um, get in touch and we can get more details on how we can help you out. All right, thank you.